Bob was bitten by the showbiz bug early on. He was known as a class clown, dubbed Wacky Mac by his fellow students at Stanford Collegiate in Niagara Falls. And by his mid-twenties, Bob McAdory was a household name on the radio. I did the usual morning show stunts and promotions. He uh, slept in a store window downtown on Main Street on, uh, on Wyndham Street overnight then did his morning show the next day and uh, it was that kind of thing that made him uh, very popular in Guelph. So popular in fact that Bob was elected to city council in 1960 at the ripe old age of 25. He was the morning man on Guelph radio station and because of that got elected to city council in Guelph. Can you imagine him as a city councilman? Heaven help city government. <laughs> yeah, Mac is going to run government. <laughs> Boy, how would you like that? No taxes, pubs open 24 hours a day. Let's have a blast. It wasn't long before Bob's antics caught the attention of Chum Radio here in Toronto. Well, I listened to Mac on CJOI, and he was just ideal, and we hired Bob. I just thought he was an outstanding communicator. It was a move that would put him in the spotlights. A radio was being designed for a much older crowd. Nobody bothered with kids. We came in and we played this and uh, set the town on its ear as an understatement because nobody was doing this. Nobody was playing hit parade music uh, except for Chum. When Chum became the first radio station in Canada to play rock and roll, it was out with the old and in with the new. Bob became part of the new. Mac did a lot of things no one else would do which is why we can't talk about most of them. <laughs> Needless to say, Chum captured a lot of attention, high ratings, a bevy of female fans, and up-and-coming rock and rollers. Chum rock. And uh, boy, that was the only one. And so, boy, if you could make it on Chum and get some airplay, uh, you were a teenage idol in your own head anyway. Mac was part of a star system that was enhanced by annual appearances at the Canadian National Exhibition and the formation of the Chumming Birds. We put together this, this group. We rehearsed about, I don't know, four numbers or something. That's all we could sing. And uh, people loved us. On the wings of a It was 1964. Prime Minister Lester B. Pearson chose the maple leaf for Canada's new flag. James Bond's Goldfinger was released. And Beatlemania was rampant. It was a phenomenon. I don't think anybody knew what was coming. Um, I mean, they, they had number one, two, three, and four on the, on the Chum Hit Parade chart for, for weeks and weeks and weeks. Bob met and introduced the Beatles at Maple Leaf Gardens. The band was kicking off their North American tour in Toronto. Mayhem is, I've never seen anything like it since. When Matt got on stage and his mouth moved, that was all we, that's all we saw, we never heard anything. It was an event that would prove to be a thrill of a lifetime. After spending over 15 years on the radio, it was time for a change. In June of 1976, Bob was hired on contract as a satirist at an up-and-coming television station called Global. Bob, uh, he, he, he went on TV, and uh, he's been a legend ever since. Hi, Stan Pawalski, as God is my witness news, Channel 622, Cable 3 here at the scene of the North Tonawanda Airport disaster. Now let's go down and see if we can't have a chat with the maimed and wounded. Did some remarkable groundbreaking work with a fellow by the name of Bob Schroeder. And uh, they really did some exciting things together and uh, helped put Global on the map. The one and only Mac! Who's that? This unique work came in the form of The Mac Show, which aired from 1979 to 1980. An irreverent look at news and current affairs. Beliefs which I myself share. Bob and I were lucky enough to be doing political satire on TV during that short time in Canadian history when Joe Clark was Prime Minister. So we had a lot to work with. Okay, guys, now how about some Joe Clark jokes? 
There's so many Joe Clark's jokes that I don't want to use too many of them. They were going to film the speech. Fine. This is, this is Bob calling Joe. Okay, so he had to hold the phone phone. upside down. And at the last minute, they couldn't put the call through. Are you sure this is how they work? I think we're dead. I think we've lost the line. Maybe we should try sticking one end in our nose. Have you, have you ever tried that? I do that all the time. Uh, we did well. We showed up in the ratings. Clearly, we had a cult following. They put me on with, with Mike and then Mac, and then it, it gelled into something special. We got together by accident. It was purely, simply an accident. It was the first of its kind, a news show at noon. What began as an experiment turned into a ratings bonanza, and Mac became Global's most popular personality. People used to talk about my warmth, Mac's uh, sardonic wit, uh, Mike's uh, kind of uh, macho approach, and it just, it just worked. There was a genuine quality, and I, uh, I look back now, and, and it was the perfect mix. The trio was dubbed the three nice guys, and the people responded. At their peak in the mid-'80s, they were pulling in more than 300,000 viewers a day. And I started wearing boxer shorts again. You know, instead of... <laughs> You're not nearly as uptight. That's right. <laughs> I don't get those headaches anymore. <laughs> if we had tried, if there would have been a deliberate uh, intent on any one of our parts, to be funny or to be hilarious or be one of the three nice guys, it wouldn't have worked. We're going to have fried trout and the smoldered sneaker here in a minute. By, and barbecued shins, I think. This fire is getting out of control, and so is the show. And in live television, anything could happen, and it usually did. Liberal Michel Bissonnette is receiving treatments in a hospital near Montreal after he was found lying beside a train track in northern Italy last week. Italian police say Bissonnette must have mistaken the exit door for the door to a toilet on the high-speed express train. <laughs> Bissonnette said he had no relation. <laughs> Straighten up. Bissonnette says he has no recollection of wanting to go to the toilet or of even falling off the train and still doesn't know what happened. Bob's inherent likability and wit won over audiences and attracted wannabe stars to the show. Everybody, ma, Matilda, ma, everybody sing now. Matilda, sing a little louder. Matilda, she take me money and run Venezuela. People with no lips now. Oh, what do you do about uh... In the 90s, Bob's rising celebrity gave way to his own show called Entertainment Desk. This was a perfect vehicle for Bob. He was able to exercise his wit, his rants and raves, and meet stars, stars, stars. And you know what the secret is what? to a happy man? Learn to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Nicky, you could never learn to do that. <laughs> what are you talking about? You've done your hair this morning like he did in 20th century. <laughs> in fact, you look a hell of a lot more like Barry more than I do. Why the hell aren't you playing it at Stratton? One of these days, these boots are gonna walk all over you. And Max Charm always oh, wooed the nice ladies. Huh? I appreciate this so much. It's, I'm having such a good time. Yeah. 20 years ago was a pleasure. It's a pleasure now. That's right. We worked here 20 years. I, I was I, telling I, you. I'm chilled to... to have this kind of relationship with a man. Is that right? Oh, <laughs> long standing, <laughs> let me tell you. He's charmed us all. He's, he falls in love on a daily basis. Welcome, and I'm still in love with you. Oh, thank you. It's been 25 years. Thank you. So, what anyway. Is your tattoo? I have, oh, stop! Oh, Judy. Oh, you're grabbing sex donkey. Oh, God, I think Bob? I love you, too. Are you excited? Yes, I am. No kidding. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> My chair is growing a pillow. Whoop. Proud of his heritage, Bob has always supported all things Irish, including sporting a shamrock tattoo normally hidden from the viewers. 
and in 1993, he received the Spirit of Ireland Award. Bob is also a well-heeled traveler. He's crossed the pond many times to shoot special projects and features for Global News. We're on 1,263, 1,264. What a way to spend an afternoon. We drank nothing but tea on this trip. Little scones and cups of tea. Ha! Bob has always kicked the competition, entertaining if viewers even when he didn't mean to. <laughs> There you go. You got him now. You got him right where you want him. Overconfident. There you go. Whoop. Into the drapes. Thank you, Bob. I think you're a loser. Even old colleagues remember. Now it's time for entertainment. Mac? Coming up in entertainment, right? The guy never had his microphone. I mean, it was millions of miles away where only Mac could be. You got the microphone? I'll see you in a couple of minutes on the new news. Bob has been a staple on our airwaves for 40 years, entertaining us with his wit and irreverence. His fans and his global family will never forget him and how much he's given to us over the years. Bob, of course, was here back in the uh, 40s when we all started out together. Bob, it's about time you retired. You sure took your time. I should be retiring soon, too. Bob, I'm retiring actually this year as well. I just decided since you are, I'm going to too. You're leading the way. You're kind of like the Moses of the old guys. Bob, I'm going to miss you. Your fashion sense has inspired me in many ways. Keep wearing sweaters and trim the hair just a little bit. And good luck on whatever you do next. I mean it. Remember this, Bob. This is what they told me in 1952. The big time is just around the corner for us. <laughs> it's a long corner in it, Bob. <laughs> Keep rocking, kid. To one of the originals and uh, someone who's had a great effect on Toronto music and great support for Toronto music, just want to say goodbye and thank you very much. It was a joy to watch you. It was a joy for me sometimes to be a guest of yours on the air. And uh, I'm going to miss you. Congratulations on a great career. Thank you. I wish you lots of love and laughter in whatever you do. And don't forget about us, because we certainly won't forget about you. And the viewers will never forget about you. So I love you lots. And I'm just going to say so long and not goodbye. Oh, God, I want to live inside your trousers. Really, Charles? Do you want to turn into a pair of knickers? The industry and the people of this country will miss you uh, dearly. In particular, uh, the, uh, the people here in Toronto, especially the uh, Eglinton Don Mills area. Congratulations, Bob. Have a fun retirement. You deserve it. I hope you have a lot of fun on your retirement, okay? I'm gonna love you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs> I was just reading here in the Spokesman Review that Bob McAdory is actually going to retire. I, I can't believe it. Because 10 years ago when we worked together, I was convinced that he was retired then. No, no, it, seriously. You know, Mac, you were probably one of the, the few gentlemen in our business. And God knows there aren't many. We had a few good times, and I know that you're going to have a lot more good times now that you're not going to have to report for duty two, three days a week. It was a real pleasure working with you. I hope you have a wonderful retirement. You are truly one of the wittiest and most irreverent people I know, and you deserve to have a lot of fun. Bob, I just want to say that you are one of the most wonderful people I have ever worked with, and I know that I, when I come back to Canada, will miss seeing you on the air, and I know the country will miss seeing you, but best of luck to you. Well, good afternoon. <coughs> My pills. I never thought any of us would ever live long enough to retire. Uh, I wish you luck, I wish you health, I wish you a good time, and I wish you could do now what you used to do then. I think Mac is one of the few people in Canadian broadcasting who can legitimately lay claim to being one of a kind, absolutely, totally unique in terms of presentation, in terms of personality, in 
terms of what he brought to that screen. In the 16 years I've had the pleasure of working with him, I can honestly say that not a day has gone by that he hasn't made me laugh, and that's been a great gift. They say that laughter is the best medicine, and if that's true, I should be just about the healthiest person around. Bob, I have to say thank you for all the laughs and a few tears along the way as well. I wish you all the best, and I love you.